Hey, Johannes here. Today we will talk about what hardcore players do not want you to know in Season of Mastery. Some of these tips have never been covered on YouTube before and it took me over two years to learn them. You will be surprised. You will learn how to remain ahead of the curve in classic Season of Mastery. Let's dive into the video. Some of these tactics in Season of Mastery will be hard, but as you know, hard work pays off usually, right? If you are new to the channel, hello, welcome, I am Johannes and I make World of Warcraft videos about Season of Mastery. I put out one video a week on Thursday and sometimes extras. I hosted at 1.9 weekly 40 man rosters in phase 6 of Classic WoW, 6 being next GDKP rosters. Let's start with one of the biggest gold makers that gets overlooked countless of times. Players in WoW are usually lazy, they want to log in, get gear and log out. In WoW Classic, you saw this with some players not even bothering getting world buffs. You saw it with not many enchanters staying active, as enchanting can be a grind and you have to stay logged in for it. So how do we combat this in Season of Mastery Classic? I myself have bought a bunch of stuff on Auction House, as many of you know I made 1 million gold in Classic, so I did not mind paying a bit more for consumables on 6 characters. So what do you mean Johannes? Just sell consumables? I knew that already! Well yes, young Pladawan, but as it turns out, it is not that simple. You gotta know the perfect time to list your items and get away with bigger profits, instead of just randomly selling them. So what you can do is calculate at what time majority of your realm rates. Usually in Europe this is Wednesday 1930 and Sunday 1930. This depends on your server. Do research of what the other best days are. On Razor Gore this was Thursday. So what days would people prepare for these coming raids? You gotta take that into account as well. If players are raiding on Wednesday, then you should start selling on Tuesday already. Then once you get into a rhythm, you will notice what time exactly on the days are the best. Wednesday will be the best time. People log in, notice they are missing Elixir of Moon Goose, Greater Fire Protection Pots, etc. They go to Auction House and buy it. The raid leader in each guild does a call out at raid time. Make sure you have 5 Greater Fire Pots with you, or even more. 5 to 10 people forget and buy them for sick outrageous prices in Season of Mastery. Same thing on Thursday. Then you have a dip in sales and your next big gold day will be Sunday. So once again, you start selling consumables in Season of Mastery on Saturday. On the days you are not selling, you can buy out your competition or buy the mats and prepare your consumables for the raiding days. Do this weekly, monthly or yearly in Season of Mastery and you will make a ton of gold. It requires a lot of effort as you have to keep track of what you crafted, also what you have and how much it costs exactly to craft. Sometimes it is not going to be a profit depending on your profession and you can apply this to anything craftable in terms of consumables. Make sure to check out my free ebook. It's just a page you can open on the website so you don't end up wasting any time in the wrong guild in Season of Mastery. Let's get back to the video. So what is next? Time to research the bugs on your server in Season of Mastery. This comes in a bit later and you can apply the same thing. Are there two, three, maybe even four bugs at the same time? Well, that's a lot of unprepared alts wanting to buy a lot of last minute stuff. Sometimes in pugs, stuff goes for gold. Like in my 9 GDKPs a week back in Classic WoW. GDKPs are raids where everything goes for gold and at the end the raid leader takes a cut of the profits and then splits the rest with the entire raid. So you have some people buying stuff and some people just there to make some gold. So these players have the gold to spend if they are running weekly GDKPs and just want to fast consumables in Season of Mastery. So your best target for this will be the GDKP bugs or even Sulfoserf with a few items gold bit. The others will work as well, but try to look for these in specific. As you can see, you can apply this to any server and all consumables. You can even go further and study what classes are most being played on your server. Through Warcraft logs and then you check your server. I think it will be probably Warrior, but who knows with these new bosses in Season of Mastery being way harder. Next part, hardcore players do not want you to know in Season of Mastery. Skinning. What? Skinning, Johannes? That's not interesting. Well, here's some incredible info on what you can actually do with it. So while you're leveling, if you're not sold on some professions yet that you want to pick, you gotta pick skinning in Season of Mastery. You'll be able to level it up by just questing around and skinning the mobs you kill. Once you get to 275 or 300, you're able to start skinning Devil's Tower Leather. 
They are a Nugoro crater and they have a specific path that they run back and forth. At the start there will probably be many layers as Season of Mastery is quite popular. So once you killed a few in your layer, swap to a different one as the respawn timers can take a bit. You can also do this with Black Lotus if you're good at farming those. These are the paths they run, so just walk around there, back and forth, till you found one or two. If there is too much competition, swap layers as well. You could do this by asking a party invite in your guild, world chat or looking for group chat. What can you do with the devil sour leather that you skin from these mobs? These used to sell between 8 and 20 gold each at the start of my server and it went back and forth a lot. What you can do is you buy them all out and relist them. It can be quite risky though, but if you think the price is too cheap, why not? This is what you can craft with it. Devil Sour Gauntlets and Devil Sour Leggings. These are pre-biz for hunters, fury warriors and even seen rogues use them, so it will have a lot of demand. As you can see that is 22 Devil Sour Leather per player. That is quite a bunch. So when you are farming there you can be 100% sure there will be a buyer for your Devil Sour Leather in Season of Mastery in Phase 1. Later on when you get to 60 in Season of Mastery everyone will need to run Upper Black Rock Spire for achievements for Blackwing Lair and to farm the pre biz Flask of the Titans recipe. Find someone with a key or farm it yourself. You can get the key from Lower Black Rock Spire and you need these 3 gems for it. With a bit of luck, in no time you will have it, so you can start hosting the groups. If you do have this key, it gives you the power to make the group and tell them, hey, nobody's skin. I'm taking all of them, this will make you about 10 to 20 gold a run if you vendor them. They won't mind, as they are just happy that they have a guy with a key in Season of Mastery. With this key you can charge players that want to run the dungeon but don't have the key as well. Make sure to advertise this in World Chat. I usually charge about 10 gold. This comes down to 1 gold per person, so it's not that bad. Might as well make some gold while you're getting your pre bus in Season of Mastery, right? While you're doing upper Blackrock runs, you can also try to get the Skinning Dagger. The Skinning Dagger gives you access to the skin the dogs in Molten Core for Core Ladder and skills of Onexia from Onexia herself. Since Season of Mastery content comes out faster than normal, there will be less skills of Onexia on the market. You need these to craft the Onexia Scale Cloak and is mandatory to have for Blackwing Lair. Otherwise you die when the variant spawns after the add phase. Or when you get a flame breath from one of the three dragons. Fire Maw, Ebon Rock and Flame Core. Core Letter is used for the following things that are interesting in Season of Mastery. Core Hound Belt. This is a bis belt to have for Paladins and Resto Druids. Or even Diamond Flasking Warriors. And comes out in Phase 3. You need Reputation with Revert with Torian Brotherhood. And 300 leather working for it. To do this you just deliver them a lot of core letter, lava cores and fiery cores. I recommend keeping the fiery cores as those are used to make these belts. On to more core letter items in Season of Mastery. You need to be elemental letter working to craft the following stuff. Corehound boots and molten hell. They can be used for feral tanks, for that extra fire resistance on bosses like fire maw and ragnaros. Dark iron boots and the gauntlets. Both of these are needed for Fire Maw and they can't hurt for Ragnaros in Season of Mastery. You need to be an Armorsmith in Blacksmithing to craft these. Many will need these, so if you're thinking of going to these professions in Season of Mastery Classic, you can make decent gold with just crafting them. If you go that route, try to buy up the Lava Cores, Fiery Cores and Core Letters. You can turn them in for rep and buy your way to the patterns or ask your guild for some and tell them you will craft these for the whole guild when needed. If they don't have someone yet and you are sacrificing your professions for it and you are reliable, it is hard to say no for them. Also while you're at it, take blacksmithing and go swordsmith. So you can also craft nightfall axe. This way you can make them both. The nightfall axe fees were between 15 and 100 gold each when the weapon eventually released. So with no debuff limit now on bosses, these might be needed even more. When they are part of the meta, it will have a mini Lionheart effect in Season of Mastery. The next part hardcore players do not want you to know in Season of Mastery is a big pattern. This pattern will make you retire in World of Warcraft Season of Mastery, never having to go out farming for gold anymore if gotten early. If you have one of the patterns we are gonna talk about here, and you want to level slash boost up an alt, get a second account. You can just alt tap back and forth in Season of Mastery and post a message here and there that you can offer the servers. 
The first one is Lionheart Helm. I covered these a little bit in one of my other videos, but I'll go a bit more in detail now. Everyone on the server that is a warrior will want these, and some meme red paladins, Gek W. If you are the first, second, or even the fourth to get this pattern, you can make a ton of gold depending on how active you are. I remember in Classic on our PvP Razor Gore server, the first guy that got the pattern was charging people between 200 and 250 gold a craft. People had mats ready for over a week. If you are the first, all the hardcore warriors will be spamming you to craft it. Stick to a strict fee for everyone though, as you do not want to be PMing Bob that it's 150 gold and then James 250 gold. When they get to know, they will feel ripped off. You can of course do it for free for friends and guildies, but the price stays the same for everyone not affiliated with you. So how can you combat this? Try to check the Lionheart pattern frequently on auction house. Ask World Chat you're looking for it. Do anything you can to try to get this pattern as when you are the first you will be have probably between 5 to 10k the first day. And this will only get to be more later as more warriors get to 60 daily and are farming the materials for it. I was the fifth to get this on our server and I made 100 gold per craft. There was this person called Bio, a officer in goons that set up a mafia for it. He decided on the price we would all charge and if he did not abide by it he would start crafting them for free for everyone. So you either ask the same fee as him, or you make zero gold. Since I just bought the pattern for about 1k gold at the time, I wanted to at least recoup my investment. I made my gold back within 3 days, and I think I made close to 3k gold crafting it for people. Of course this manipulative mafia did not last for long, and it took the 12th person to get the pattern to go against it. The thing is, this Lionheart Helm is bis for the entirety of Classic for Fury Warriors. So even in phase 4, 5 and 6 I was still charging people 50 gold to craft it as well. So it is a great investment even later in the game. Do keep in mind you have to have armor smithing in your blacksmithing for it. This does cost some gold to power level. The next part, hardcore players do not want you to know in Season of Mastery is the following pattern. Plus 4 stats. Well I know I covered this a little bit, but again going more in detail of why it is the thing to have in the game. At the start, a lot might think, oh, 3 or 4 stats, does not matter as much, they will sell it as most don't level enchanting. Enchanting requires a lot of effort with staying online and dealing with people. It is a very rare pattern and I have only seen it come from Ezrigos, Nefarian and Onexia in Classic WoW. The fees also did not come close to the Lionheart one, but everyone needs enchants, so it's a broader market. We did not have many with the 4 stats pattern on our server and the ones that had were very inactive. So when I got it, when Blackwing Lair was out, customers were flying in. I would log in and get 2 to 3 whispers of people needing it. I was charging players 20 gold at 4 stats enchant. At one point I was getting a Felwood buff and flying there. This hunter DM'd me that he needed 2 of them, one on his tier 1 chest and one on his tier 2 chest. I told him maybe later as I have world buffs while waiting on my flower he became next to me and traded and I made 40 gold right there. This is the demand for 4 stats, so if you can get it between 1 to 4k gold, buy it ASAP. It is because Nefarian drops 2 tier 2 chests every week for all the guilds, so imagine all the guilds on the server needing 2 4 stats a week. Yeah, that is a lot of fees. Once people start getting 4 stats enchant in Season of Mastery, you will be the guy known to have it, and all the guilds will be putting a red carpet for you on the floor just to get it. Gag W. Imagine a warrior getting his arena chest, or a tank getting his tier chest, finally! Of course they want that 4 stats. I asked 20 gold for a while as a fee and slowly started asking 15 gold when Nux started arriving. Most important part is being active with it. Being offline, you won't be able to advertise or enchant it at all. What are your gold farms for Classic Season of Mastery? Drop it in the comments. If you want to watch an insane gold farm while helping your guild, click here. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Have a good one.